Hello, I'm Noel, this is Antonio from Box Tail Suit Theatre Company and this is another Box Tail Scoop. Although, this is number 52. So I know we did, we did some vlogs beforehand when we were creating Gulliver, that's when we started doing them. But then at some point we decided, actually, without just talking about Gulliver, we were going to carry on. We started doing uh, numbered weekly vlogs. This is week 52, it means we've been doing these ones for an entire year. It's quite a lot. It's quite, quite a lot, lot of vlogs. Yeah, so maybe it's time to, you know, do something fresh with the, the box tail scoop. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> we yeah. have been, as you can see, working on our woodland friends for Hansel and Gretel this week, and we've made some good progress on the puppets. We've not only been working on the puppets, in fact, we've also been looking at the set. Noel's made some little cardboard set models, and we've been trying to work out the scale of the trees and things like that for the set, but we thought we'd focus on Puppets today. Yeah, so excuse the stuff stuck to the wall there behind us. That's I'm trying to measure up exactly what size pieces of set <laughs> size. I was stuck between size or scale. <laughs> the pieces of set should be. I'm just trying to measure that out back there. So we have uh, the, some familiar friends here: uh, the rabbit, the squirrel, the robin, and I think we'd started on the magpie last week, and then we've also added an owl. But they are all now very, very nearly finished in terms of the heads up to the point where they would then need spray painting. Mm -hmm. So um, we can show you. Uh, I guess we may as well start with the rabbit. Yep. Do you want to pass them over? You can hold them if you like. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so uh, as you can see, since last week. I have finished the covering of the papier-mâché all over, smoothed it out, and he's also now got, we've set his eyes in now, so he's got these kind of little eyebrow, eyelid eyebrow things here um, to help his expression, to make sure that the eyes feel like they're part of the head, not just stuck on. I've also rounded off the cheeks a little bit, or whatever these bits are called, mm. <laughs> a little bit round his nose. Yeah, I don't know. What is the bit where you put the whiskers? If anybody knows what that's called, where the whiskers come out of, write it in the comments, that would be very interesting. So I filled that out and then I've also, um, in the, on the inside, there, it's all fully covered on the inside now, including the loops for the fingers and the thumb to make sure that it's all sturdy. And uh, it's lovely. Yeah, it's a nice shape. The last thing that needs to happen to him though is we just need to reduce the gap here between the cheek and the, the mouth bit here because it's a little bit wide and you can sort of see through the back. So I'm just going to bring that in a bit, which is something that I have done with the squirrel. So the squirrel is next, so slightly precariously balanced. Again, same thing, filled out here to make sure that he's got a nice blend now from the little lovely little mouth bit that you've done there, it's so cute, little smile. Blended it up to the nose, giving him some eyebrows, and then, don't know what I'm saying, him, squirrel could be a girl, don't even know, yeah. Filled in the bits here to make sure that that, because he was making quite a funny face um, before, and now just sort of smoothed out his expression. Yep. And then I have, again, papier mache the, the inside to done. sort that out. I think the nice thing is about these, they are so much lighter than those other prototypes that we made. Yeah, they are, they're much lighter, yeah. And actually it was, it's, it's weird, like the way, you, I know we keep saying it, one thing feeds into the next, but actually it was quite useful to do Alice before this. Definitely. Because the puppets for Alice are slightly more human, or you know, they're anthropomorphized, to use that lovely word again. Um, we, but we did have to build the, the faces out in a similar sort of way. We've done it a bit more here. So for the rabbit, actually, the rabbit's snout is a little bit longer, a bit more pronounced. And that meant that we could, there was more of a difference between what we were doing with the squirrel and what we we're doing with the rabbit. But we kind of had a little bit of practice doing that in building out the March Hare and the white rabbit for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So that was handy. Definitely. Uh, and then here's our little Robin. Um, so he, she, is looking very cute. Yeah, we thought that might be a she, didn't we? Yeah, I think she is a girl, a little girl, Robin. Um, she has some nice little eyebrow. In fact, these, I struggled more with the eyebrow -y bits on these puppets than I did with the Alice ones. I think it's so important where you put these, it makes such a difference to the expression on their faces and it makes them, it changes them from sometimes looking cute to looking angry to looking slightly scary and uh, and it took me a while um, and we were doing it together this was we? the trickiest kind of, one this it? was the trickiest one we were moving them around and I was kind of showing Noel various different options and I started off with something different in fact which had a little bit underneath a bit like the caterpillar does in Alice in Wonderland but you said I think you said it made it look kind of 
old. And yeah, it sort of sunk the eyes actually back into the head mm. and made it feel like they were, you know, bags under the eyes almost, or, or you know, they were drawn in. Yeah, so it was it was a long process actually to get this right. Mm. But now we really like her little expression. She's sort of wide-eyed and sweet. And then I've also put these little tufts on just to give the sense of feathers. Obviously, an actual robin, I mean, it doesn't have exactly this shape anyway. You're going to have to sort of cartoonify, is that a word? No idea. The um, the animal, the bird, to a little, to an extent. Yeah, and we are, you know, we're trying to strike a balance between that, between them being, because these are more animal-like puppets. Um, so we want them to be, you know, to look closer to the, mm. the actual animal. But nevertheless, you have to, you know, you have to keep that within reason. Keep them in the sort of the cute. I think that's it. We uh, wanted the children who watch the show to want to take these home with them. Yes, that's um, a good sort of touchstone to yeah. work by. Isn't it? So yeah, so there's little, and they'll be spray painted, obviously the same colour as that part of the face. So that should work. And we're looking forward to sp uh, putting some colour on these now, actually. Yeah. Because I think that'll really help define the beak and define where where the feathers are etc and again same thing nice and uh, finished off in the back there too and then this was the lovely magpie that Noel had started on last week and you finished the magpie off didn't you mm -hmm. I think you put the lower I can't remember how you uh, got. last week I think it just had the upper beak and then I think I, I hadn't really started on the bottom um, so yeah I finished that off at the beginning of this week and it, we've given our magpie some slightly crazier eyebrows because he's a little bit, a little bit bonkers, isn't he? In mm -hmm. the show. And again, same sort of feathery touches there, just to keep the birds consistent. I think he's great. He's yeah, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Yeah, it does. You know, it looks looks the part, doesn't it? And again, it's finding the little differences that distinguish a magpie from a robin. And a squirrel from a rabbit, you know, where do you, how far out do you come from? And then the key thing is going to be the colour then as well, isn't it? Of course, you know, yeah. Once you get the colour and the, the bodies and everything, uh, that will also help. And then you made this beautiful owl, which I've been covering over the last couple of days. I love this owl. I think you've done a great job with this frame. It came out quite nicely, actually. Yeah. I, uh, it was one of those where... I'd looked at various pictures of owls and they'd kind of jumbled up in my head so I'm pleased it came out as well as it did because it, I think it could have gone a bit wayward. <laughs> I think the important thing again you were saying when you were making the frame for the owl was to make sure that it looked, he still looked friendly, that the beak wasn't too sharp because owls have actually got quite sharp pointy hooked beaks yeah. that could be a little bit scary if you went the wrong direction with the shape of it. Yeah definitely. But I think we came what came out was lovely yeah it was a nice sort of balance wasn't it and then I, the other important thing for this one was um for the rest of them I, I didn't bother building any eye sockets in so the eyes were just flat knowing that you were going to put on a nice little sort of eyebrow um top uh, part of the eye sort of thing but an owl its eyes are so much part of what you imagine when you think of an owl that i thought it was important to sink them in and, and uh, give it a little bit of an eye socket just for this one and then i'll still probably give i probably do something here to set the eyes in a little bit further to make sure that they've got that brow bit there yeah. um and i wonder whether it's not quite finished even yet. if we do use the, the these um these eyes these type of eyes whether we might also actually put some color around the owl's eye so, to, yeah. to give it that big eye look absolutely and then obviously he's got his lovely little whatever tufts, they are, tufts whatever yeah. they are yep yeah. And again, nearly finished. This one's not not as finished as the other ones. It's uh, the last one that I came to, so there's still a few bits that aren't quite covered properly. And like I said, I need to set the eyes in better. But they're they're not as difficult in a way to do as those ones because you've already made the socket. Um, so, but yeah, I think he's lovely. Yeah. She. Yeah, they're looking good. So you're going to move on now, aren't you, to yes, bodies? Yes, I am. I'm going to finish off. Just a couple of little tweaks that need doing on these guys before they can be painted, but only a tiny thing, and then move on to the bodies. So I went to go and get fabric to make the bodies this week. Uh, we just thought we'd show you the colours. So I chose this nice, um, it's called Batik. It's a style of dyeing that I'm very fond of. With lots of our shows, we use this kind of fabric. It's just got a nice texture to it, doesn't it? It gives it a bit of interest, even exactly. when it's just a flat piece of fabric. Because a flat colour, especially when it's supposed to be representing fur, I think it's just too flat mm. um, for what we want anyway. Uh, so 
And the li likelihood is, much like the frog puppet in Little Grim Tales, we'll probably use some of this fabric also on the faces to sort of tie the whole thing together. Yeah. So this one's for the squirrel. We're going for a kind of red squirrel. And then we've got a grey rabbit. So this is the lovely kind of grey. It's got some blues in it as well, which I love. And they're meant to be a little bit fantastical, so we haven't gone too realistic necessarily. And then the robin will have this nice dark brown with a lovely red breast. Sorry, my zoom thing. No, no, not at all. <laughs> And then the magpie will need to find a, a black. I couldn't find one when I first went. I slightly forgot to look for the um, incidental characters. These guys are the three main ones. Yeah, a black and something maybe with a little bit of that sort of iridescent blue in it. Definitely. Would be really nice. I think that would be really nice. So it'll be a question of probably adding extra pieces of fabric as well with the birds particularly to give them that textured, feathery feel. Mm. And then for me, I, I'm going to carry on working on the set um, I'm making little you know, scale cardboard models at the moment because the tricky thing is once we start cutting the board and stuff obviously there's no going back and you want to have a sense of, well it's much easier if everything is measured up beforehand and you can work exactly to scale so the tricky part about that is figuring out you know, how big do we want this tree to be, how big do we want this door to be how are they going to work together, how are they going to fit and how are they going to you know, conceal each and other. And there's a sort of extra added uh, issue I suppose with this show in that the this one and the Christmas Carol are playing back to back every day and therefore ideally there are certain elements of the Christmas Carol set that we don't want to have to move mainly the big door that we made so it needs to the some of the backdrop for this show needs to play on top of the Christmas Carol door backdrop and utilize some of the Christmas Carol stands and poles ideally so that's another thing that we're working with for kind of ease of um, transferring yep. this word from one show to the other. So um, thanks very much for watching. Um, you're hopefully going to see in next week, we'll have some beginnings of bodies and stuff to show you, I imagine, and hopefully some bits of set. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed it, uh, please do give us a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment and possibly even subscribe, of course. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.